I'd like to call this meeting to order for the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors regular session for July 18, 2023. Roll call, please, Mr. Beter. Hall. Here. Little. Here. Schwartz. Here. Trelka. Here. Leyland. Here. Would everyone please join us for a moment of silence to reflect on our actions today? Thank you. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1 is the agenda received as proposed or amended. So moved. Second. Second. Then moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Agenda is received. Item two is public comments. Is there anyone here today that would like to speak on something that is not on today's agenda? If you would, sir, please get up to the podium and give your name and address and your comments. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Todd Obadal, 124 Amity Drive. I uh, come before the board. Um, and to the uh, county attorney's office in reference to a uh, case that is pending against me in the uh, county court, um, a state charge of um, disrupting a public meeting with intent to disrupt. Um, I have made a motion uh, in a previous, uh, in, in a previous uh, hearing uh, in this building um, for dismissal of these charges on the basis of uh, procedural violations and uh, um, that certain standards of state law have not been met. Um, my right to a speedy trial has been denied by the county. My trial mm -hmm. wasn't scheduled within 90 days as with 90 days of my citation as is required by state law. I did not receive a pretrial hearing within 20 days of my citation, which is required by state law. In spite of knowledge of this by the county attorney's office, the county attorney continued to try to um, broker a plea agreement with me to plea guilty to a charge that uh, the county attorney's office did not submit any evidence to demonstrate violation of. In fact, there was a discovery deadline that was not met by the county attorney's office. No evidence was submitted to the court by the deadline um, issued by the court for discovery for defense review. Therefore, there is no evidence of violation of the statute of which I am accused. So not only did I not receive the timeliness of the process, there is no evidence presented, yet the county attorney's office still resists dismissal of these charges. The county attorney's office is not, a, um, is, is not merely a prosecutor, the county attorney prosecutes as an officer of the court is obligated when there is exculpatory evidence to reveal that to the defendant. Is also obligated when there is violations of constitutional protections of the defense that uh, that, that is brought into consideration for their actions. Yet the county attorney's office continues to seek a prosecution, a conviction, or a plea bargain when these these very objective standards of the law have not been met. I come before the County Board of Supervisors because the County Board of Supervisors has a budgetary and fiducial uh, control over various departments within the county and is in the interest of the supervisors to know that this happens. And uh, by the way, the uh, issue that was involved um, at the meeting in which I'm accused of intending to disrupt involved voter rights in the city of Waterloo. I advocated for the people of Waterloo to vote for their representatives as opposed to having, having their representative appointed behind closed doors for them, which may or may not be a crime, but I believe it is certainly inappropriate and violates the basic fundamentals of what I do believe is, are the people that sit in these chairs up here. 
I don't want to cut you off, Mr. Obadal, but you typically have three minutes. So I didn't see the I off. didn't see the clock, ma'am. That's okay. That's I'm sorry. Um, with that, I thank the the board of supervisors for their time. I would appreciate uh, any conversation um, about uh, about dismissal of these charges and seeing that justice is done and that. Uh, this, this issue can be ended without any further complications for myself or the county. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the room that has, would like to speak during public comments? Is there anyone on Zoom that would like to speak during public comments? Seeing no others, we'll move on to claims and payments. This is a resolution that the Board of Supervisors approve expenditures and that the county auditor be authorized and directed to issue checks against the various settlement of such claims as allowed. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Ms. Peden. Good morning, Board. Um, our total bill payments today are $932,359.35. That does include, we are getting into construction time and we've had some vehicles delivered. So there is a large payment to Hudson Hardware and Plumbing. That is for Hickory Hills Wastewater Treatment Project for $114,190. Um, other significant things, we have purchased a couple of vehicles. Um, let's see, one for $52,004.30 from Carl Chevrolet. We are paying our annual Esri fee of 40,000. There's just a lot of large things today. Um, a large payment's being made to conference technologies for all the conference audiovisual equipment at the Pinecrest building. That amounts $86,074.89. We're also purchasing a truck from Bill Caldwell for $54,753.49. And the other payment we're making today from the sheriff's 6040 fund, that total is $9,600.21. Everything appears to be in order. Are there any questions for Michelle? Michelle, is that truck on the day on the agenda? No, or I that, think everything, that, that, everything we're paying for was already approved through the board. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, if there are no further questions, please answer as your name is called. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Jonka? Yes. Dalen? Yes. Item four, receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, county engineer. Good morning. I want to get, give you a brief update this morning on our roadside uh, management program uh, with two things. And before I turn it over to, to Griffin to give you, he's going to give you a short update. But I wanted to introduce to you our, our uh, roadside summer intern, Nathan Ranke. Uh, he's with us uh, this summer as our uh, intern in the roadside management program. It's the first time we've had a roadside management intern. So we are happy to have him this summer and show him what goes on in, in county government as far as roadsides are concerned. He's a senior at the University of Northern Iowa and he'll be graduating in December and he is uh, studying his major is environmental resource management. So Nathan, if you wanna stand up. <laughs> Thank you. We've, we've enjoyed Thank having you. him. He'll be with us here a little bit longer, but I just wanted to, as you know, I like to have the interns come to board meetings and see what goes on in, internally in, in county government. And as I said, I, because roadside management is a new program for us, I feel it's important that uh, Griffin give you updates when necessary and he's going to do that with a short presentation this morning. Okay, great. I assume we won't see much of Nathan. He'll be with you most of the time, right? <laughs> yes. Griffin won't be a bad influence on him, will he? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on uh, how spraying this summer is going. Um, this is a GIS program that our GIS technician built, um, Derek, and uh, just because how we've been doing it in the past is old paper and pen and it's not really, you know, we're trying to keep up with the times and technology, so we might as well use what, we, what we've got here. So um, my goal is to spray a quarter of the county this summer for what we have for the equipment. So this red line um, here on basically Shank Road 
is our one quarter of the county from 20 um, and wraps around there. So um, we have sprayed a good amount. We've almost made our goal for this summer and um, we hope to surpass it. So with the equipment that we have and the equipment that we are getting, I foresee in the future um, being able to spray half the county every other year. Um, in that, in that sense, um, we'll be able to better manage our noxious weeds and brush that we have a large problem with um, currently. And by doing this every other year, we'll be able to maintain and keep on top. And then as future years come, we'll be able to use less, less spray as we go through and promote our native vegetation that, um, that we're trying to promote through the county. When you mentioned Griffin, then you probably you expect to do more than what you anticipated. Then does that change it for the next year? Then, as far as an area that won't get um, so done or? yeah, so basically where we are ending up, I have no idea by late September before the first you know or early October mm -hmm. before the first real hard frost before it kills all the trees. Um, that's when we'll stop spraying. So you know we could get as far as Dunkerton. Um, you know, once once we get past you know um, that main Elk Run area, you know it gets really long. So um, north and south. So there'd be things that will probably surprise us. There'll be things that well, we figure we could get a little further, but we didn't. But it's just it just depends on how bad the roads are and how slow we have to go. So um, and and with each green line, it has uh, attributes in here that show. Um, my certification number, who sprayed it, um, which side of the road we're on, the time, temperature, wind direction, wind speed, um, targeted species that we sprayed, and um, just restricted use, the brand of chemical, the rate that we use for per gallons, and the total gallon amount that we used. So it's basically what we had on a sheet of paper, we condensed it and put it in this web application. So is that an ongoing record then too from pr yep. every year that we'll have? Yeah, so we have uh, Tony Woods, he's also um, spraying with um, a lot of the he, the tractor that has the brush mower on it, so he follows them. So he still gives me the paper sheets and then we input it into here so we have a live update and we can really see where we've been throughout the summer. Have any questions? Yeah, this is Chris. I've got uh, just one question. I was wondering, um, at kind of what point in this uh, process do we get into uh, more of the plantings, more um, the pl uh, of the native species? Sure. Yeah. Once we are basically, I have to go out and evaluate. There's specific sites that I'd like to um, plant this. Um, probably this next year I'll start doing what you call a complete burn down spray and get a clean clean uh, seed bed and then once I have that then I'll be able to establish our native seeding um, and these are just extra acres on top of all the ditch clean outs that I seed into natives so um, my goal every year um, this year I I'm kind of focusing on spraying just because that is a large problem that we have and trying to get my head wrapped around what I'm dealing with and just on a year to year basis and but my goal each year is to um, do that complete burn down spray and and reconstruct a prairie on at least two to five miles of roadway each year um, on top of all of our ditch clean outs that we plant all into native. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? That's all right. Okay, We're great. very good. Thank appreciate, you. Yeah, appreciate the update. Mm -hmm. There are any other department oh, before I speak? <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, board. Caitlin Emmerich with the uh, Public Health Department. I just have a quick update on the local health and human services alignment that is being. Um, administered by the Iowa Department of Health and Human Services. So town halls were held uh, around the state last week 
and I attended um, the town hall that was held in Waverly. There were a lot of providers from uh, Black Hawk County and surrounding areas that attended that Waverly town hall. The day before the town hall, so on Monday the 10th, a group of uh, providers that will be affected by this assessment got together um, and we met to kind of come to a consensus on what things were important to us, what information we wanted to provide in the town hall, um, and to try to put together some talking points moving forward, given that we we're not really sure um, the direction that the assessment is gonna go. Um, but I just wanted to share a couple of those talking points with the board and um, partners that were included in putting these together include our local um, community action program, our maternal health contractor, child care resource and referral, early childhood Iowa boards, DCAT, our food bank, area agency on aging, substance use um, agencies, and four of our local public health agencies, uh, which includes our environmental health representation. And so the three pieces that we took to the town hall to share as feedback to the state as they conduct this assessment is that services should continue to be provided in the county of residence for clients um, those in-person services and a physical presence in all counties are important for access um, to Iowans for health and human service um, services. Services provided should meet the needs of the clients. Um, and then in addition to provider feedback, because many providers attended those town halls, a client feedback is also an important component of the assessment and um, there is a recommendation to update the assessment to include clients to be able to give feedback of what works for them and what does not work for them and where areas of opportunity are and things like that. Um, just a reminder in case you uh, need it, this assessment was launched in June. It is going to be completed in October with a report from the vendor that has been hired to conduct this assessment. Um, and it will include recommendation, recommendations and rationales for at least two proposed options for service delivery maps and at least two proposed funding models for our local health and human services system. Any questions? Did they keep a timeline? Mm -hmm. There is a timeline, is, yep. I'm just, oh, oh that's all right. I was just quick. curious of when they'll make some decisions on this assessment. Yep, so the, the assessment, um, is there, it's actually on the website of the assessment. So if you need me to send out the website again, I'm certainly happy to do that. Um, like I said, the assessment started in June with the hiring of um, HMA, which is the vendor that's doing the assessment. Um, the town halls, stakeholder surveys and interviews are gonna be conducted in July. In August, they're gonna synthesize the information. In September, they're identifying options and recommendations, and in October, they will deliver the final report. So it's a very expedited assessment. There was a, um, there was a question in the town hall in Waverly about why the assessment is so expedited, and um, the vendor was not able to answer that question at this time. Um, but I do anticipate that the report will be provided to our um, state representatives and state senators in advance of our legislative session in January. That's good. Any other questions for me? No, and the website information I probably got, but I was going to yep. say if it's I can send it again. now too, that's that'd fine. be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Amanda Fezemeyer, Human Resources Director. So uh, really quick, we just sent out a communication um, late yesterday about uh, the impact of the potential UPS strike with our specialty prescription medications. So this uh, could impact a pretty small portion of our um, employees and members on the health insurance plan. But uh, we sent that communication out. We've authorized uh, refills to occur uh, now through the end of July um, as that UPS strike um, is expected to occur August 1st. So just a FYI on that, FYI on that. doesn't affect most of our um, members here, but it does um, affect a small portion. Compensation study results, so we've gotten the first look of that. Uh, we have, HR has until the end of July to get um, a review of that, to kind of uh, make sure that the information collected uh, aligns with the classifications that we have, as well as to identify um, some major misalignments. 
Uh, so we'll be uh, presenting that out to the advisory committee in August. So Dan and Linda and Grant and Mike Hendrickson and uh, Michelle, myself, and the HR team uh, will be getting together probably in mid-August to uh, take a look at that, uh, which will then be uh, reviewing the data, uh, kind of coming up, having certainly questions for the uh, consultants, and then uh, ideally coming out with a recommendation as to uh, go towards the Board of Supervisors. So uh, recruitment still in pretty uh, high mode here. So um, you notice we've got about two pages of job openings. Um, one in particular is our public health director, um, as well as several other public health positions. So uh, the Board of Health is meeting tomorrow in a special, special closed session to continue to review applicants. Uh, we've been using an executive search company through Baker Tilly, and um, it has presented some challenges um, with this uh, specific role in public health. It's been a large amount of professionals in public health that have left the field or gone to um, maybe not the top position um, around different agencies, whether that's state or the uh, counties that we see across Iowa and across the whole country. So um, I know I've been kind of quiet on that. I've just been letting the Board of Health work through that process, but uh, we are continuing to work to find a replacement. And um, if you have any questions, you could always reach out and I'd be happy to answer those. Great, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Yeah. Is there anyone on Zoom that would like to provide an update today? All right. Looks like there are no more. So thank you to those who have presented today. Moving on to item five, minutes approved for July 11th, 2023. So moved. Second. Okay. And moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Same, same sign. Aye. Minutes are approved. We have later in the meeting today um, two hearings, um, one for Ryan Weber rezone request and the other for a bid opening for the facility security services. Item seven, consent agenda. The following items are acted upon by a single resolution without separate discussion unless someone wishes to pull an item to be discussed. So moved. So moved. Moved and seconded. Please answer as your name is called. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. Jonka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item eight, contracts and agreements. This is a resolution that the proposal received from Modus Engineering of Waterloo, Iowa in the amount of $21,500 and utilizing American Rescue Plan funding for the purposes of designing an energy efficient HVAC system for the Conservation Administrative Office Building be accepted and contract awarded. This project will serve to provide clean, even, and safe airflow for the public and the staff. The same has been approved by the Conservation Board and recommended for approval by the Board of Supervisors. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. Morning, Board. Just very quickly, uh, this is the HVAC system that we put out for bid quite some time ago. We did not receive any bids. Uh, when we corresponded with some of the HVAC companies, they said uh, it was probably going to be necessary uh, to have an engineer put a design together so that they were all bidding uh, apples to apples. And so that's what we did, and that's what this is for. Great. Any other questions for Mike? Please answer as your name is called. Schwartz? Yes. Jelka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item B, resolution that the lowest responsible bid received from Envision Architecture, LLC, Waterloo, Iowa, for the Treasurer's Office remodel project, which will provide professional design services to remodel and redesign the office space in the Blackhawk County Courthouse funded through the American Rescue Plan Act, with a total bid of $89,400 be awarded and direct the chair to sign, as recommended by Rory Giving Facilities Director. So moved. So moved. And moved and seconded, Mr. Giving. Uh, good morning, board. Rory Giving, maintenance superintendent. Um, <clears throat> yes, we did receive uh, one bid uh, for professional services uh, for the treasurer's department. Uh, we did hold a pre-bid meeting. Uh, we did have uh, two uh, companies attend that. Uh, one company did back out uh, due to workload. Uh, so that leaves us with our one bid from Envision uh, for 89400 uh, they indicated the estimated construction cost for this remodel to be at uh, 800 
and fifteen thousand. Um, estimated furniture cost to be at two hundred and fifteen thousand, uh, giving us a total of one million one million uh, thirty thousand for the project. Are there any questions for Rory? Yeah, this is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Joel Cast? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Thank you. Item 9, other business. Resolution that the request for purchase of capital equipment submitted by Catherine Nicholas, County Engineer, be approved and direct the chair to sign uh, for same. Did we miss uh, the second? Oh, I missed. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I'm going to go right past that. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. The really important part. <laughs> yep. I went on to other business. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for that. This is a resolution that the lowest responsible bid received from Envision Architecture LLC, Waterloo, Iowa, for the multi-department remodel project, which will provide professional design services to remodel and redesign the office space in the Blackhawk <laughs> County Courthouse, funded through the American Rescue Plan Act, with a total bid of $107,500 be awarded and direct the chair to sign as recommended by Roy Gebbing, Facilities Director. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Mr. Gebbing? Uh, yes, again, uh, as stated, $107,500 for professional services with a estimated construction cost of $1,050,000. Um, estimated furniture cost, 165000 uh, giving us a total of $1.215 uh, for the total construction cost estimate. And one bid received for this one as well. Rory, can you speak real quick to the, uh, what this, pro a little bit more specifically to the project? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, this uh, multi-department, the reason we named it that is because it uh, does involve uh, the auditors, the elections, and also the attorneys. Um, and so what this project will look like is um, taking uh, a number of individuals from the auditors department, uh, moving them over to the uh, elections department, uh, remodeling that area. Uh, putting in two private offices, um, making the uh, counter uh, ADA uh, acceptable, um, actually on both sides, both the uh, auditors and the uh, elections counter uh, will be uh, made ADA accessible. Um, and then moving the elections over to the auditors side, uh, putting them in the area with their, uh, with their equipment was the main objective there. Um, and then down on the lower level would be expanding our existing conference room into uh, what's currently uh, attorney's conference room office space. Uh, and then over at the uh, deli in the lower level, uh, putting in uh, two office areas in there um, and then uh, essentially gutting the deli, uh, putting new flooring in there and then also adding a uh, uh, nursing mother's uh, area for both the public and uh, employee or staff uh, to be able to utilize. So it really, uh, this project does cover uh, a lot of ground, uh, a lot of variable, uh, very variables, so. And you said that bid was one, two, 250? Uh, uh, yes, uh, yep, yeah, 1,215,000. 215, thank you. Yes. Is there a pro projected cost on this, Rory? I'm talking about the project. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. The total project that you just talked about, is there a pro, uh, projected cost there? Or uh, this is just for design, right? For, for what what uh, the board is approving today is for the design uh, for the $107,500 is for the professional services. Uh, the estimated uh, construction cost is one million fifty thousand. Estimated new furniture cost is one hundred and sixty-five thousand, uh, bringing it to a total of one million two hundred and fifteen thousand. And this is all ARPA money. Uh, yes. Yes. And if I if I recall that that number is that one point two is fairly close to what we had discussed during the budget, as opposed to the Treasury Office. That being that number is 
double what we had originally discussed, which it is what it is. But this number we had talked about in the budget, if I recall. Yeah, well, yeah, I think, but I said we were pretty close, I think, too, to the treasurer's office, were we not? Yeah, we actually, because there were some different options on the table during budget, the multi-department one is actually less expensive than we are estimating. Mm -hmm. So while the treasurer is a little more, the two together are fairly close, actually a little bit less than what we had estimated earlier. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Grant, and, for bringing. And Marie, just, just for the just for the public's information, um, the, this new remodel of the lowest conference or the lower level conference room that is at the main goal of um, improving the the quality and access and the speed of our in person early voting. Yeah, absolutely, good point. Um, uh, for the in person voting, uh, the uh, thought process for that lower level was to hold that. Uh, that voting in that conference room. So by adding, uh, removing a wall, uh, making that uh, conference room uh, almost double in size, adding another set of double doors so public can come in through one uh, entrance and exit out the other side. Uh, our intent is to, to make that a smoother process and uh, get those lines down to the lower level out of the uh, second floor uh, where we historically hold that voting. We've got a lot of background noise, Davis, on your... Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you, Grant, for bringing that to my attention, that important project we don't want to delay another week. <laughs> so. Any other questions on that? Thank you. Thank you. This is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Hall. Yes. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. Joka. Yes. Bailey. Yes. Now moving on to nine other business resolution Hello. that the request for purchase of capital equipment submitted by Catherine Nicholas, county engineer, be approved and directed yes, chair to calling. sign for same to purchase one flatbed with hydraulics in the amount of ten thousand nine hundred and eighty-five dollars from Don's Truck Sales, Fairbank, Iowa. So moved. Second. Okay. Good morning again, board. This is an attempt to outfit our roadside biologist with a, a heavy duty truck that is able to carry um, a tank, a, a large tank and uh, spray equipment. Uh, so last week you approved us buying the chassis, the, the cab and the chassis truck from Bill Caldwell. Uh, this week we would like to ask to be allowed to purchase um, the flatbed portion of that truck that has an electric hoist on it. We did solicit four uh, vendors, we received uh, bids back from three of them, Don's Truck Sales, Future Line, Truck Bodies, and Hawkeye Truck Equipment. Uh, Don's Truck Sales met our specifications at the lowest cost, so I'm asking that we be allowed to purchase the, uh, the uh, flatbed from Don's Truck Sales. Okay. Any questions for Kathy? Hearing none, please answer as your name is called. <clears throat> Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Chalka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Daly? Yes. IMB, this is a motion to utilize a staffing agency for temporary clerical work for approximately five months, not to exceed $25,000, as recommended by Catherine Nicholas, County Engineer. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, our account specialist resigned back in May. We've been um, trying very hard to find a replacement. We just haven't uh, achieved that yet, been successful with that. Meanwhile, our budget administrator analyst is uh, getting close to going on maternity leave, so we do not want to be without this account specialist. That position is critical in getting and paying our vendors. Uh, receiving checks or payments from vendors and importantly um, paying our employees so um, this position is critical that we we hope to find someone in the next few weeks before our budget analysis is gone for several months so we are would like to uh, request that we be allowed to use a temp agency through the end of the calendar year if, if possible have you had any contact with them today do you know how many uh, you'll be working with or trying to We've been letting HR okay. handle those details. Super. Okay. I know that's a critical position for you, so thank you. 
If there are no more other questions for Kathy, this is a motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Item C, motion that the grounds use request for totally rolled ice cream to use the Blackhawk County parking lot north of the Pinecrest building located at 1407 Independence on July 20th, 2023 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for food truck services be approved and received and placed on file the certificate of insurance for same and direct the chair to sign permission letter for same. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do you have any comments on this, ma'am? Okay. Only if you have questions. Um, this is just an initiative from our wellness committee to, you know, kind of do something nice and provide a food truck for the tenants at the Pine Chris building. And anyone else that wants to come? Yeah, super. So has the paperwork all been taken care of, or is that something we need to yep. make sure? Yeah. Yep, okay. I forwarded that along with my um, agenda request, so everything should be yep. on file, right? Okay. Super. Thank you. This is a motion, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item D, update and discussion on 6843 East Washburn Road on the no rise requirement per the Iowa DNR flood insurance program. Mr. Heiberger is here to talk about that today and last week I think he was well aware that Ms. Um, Stephanie Schulte was here and right. talked a little bit about it, but we wanted, I guess, all the details a little bit more for all of us and our knowledge as well as if, where that status is, I guess, if there's anything to be done. Okay, yeah, well, you know, in addition I did to call her just to let you know, too. I did call her and tell her that we were going to have this on the agenda, and she said she was going to be out of state but she, and wouldn't be able to be here. She may have, I, she mentioned, okay, her husband, she was going to let know. So just wanted, if there are questions or comments, he's here today, too. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, basically uh, for uh, the, uh, the no-rise certification um, is required to place any type of structure within the floodway, which is the most restrictive uh, place to build. <clears throat> so basically the no-rise certification will, will certify that, you know, if, you know, the structure remains, uh, that um, it's not going to increase the water level somewhere else within the floodway um, in order so they what happened was they 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 constructed a garage in the floodway with no permits uh, no floodplain approval um, and uh, I guess this this was discovered you know from everything that was going on um, over with mr. Tharp's property um, so yeah, there's it's an Iowa DNR requirement. Um, it's only been around uh, since since the floodplain maps were last updated. Prior to that, um, you know, somebody probably could have just put up a garage with this criteria letter that we have. Uh, but after the 2011 floods, DNR now had information on floodways, so that got incorporated into the state's floodplain maps. Um, so the only way that they could keep that structure is to apply for a variance through the Board of Adjustment. Uh, but as a can, you know, as part of that, before they can even take it to the Board of Adjustment, they need the no rise certification um, to to show and justify that it's going to result in a no rise uh, <clears throat> if uh, the structure is placed on in the floodway. The structure is already there. Um, so in order for them to keep it. You know, I can't accept a variance application until we get this information. And, you know, I know that it's very few perform it in the state. It's difficult. It could be expensive. But I'm not the one that built a garage in the floodway without someone's permission. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll try to help them the best we can. Uh, but at the same time, there's rules and regulations that we all must follow. You know, everybody must follow in Blackhawk County when it comes to construction of anything in the floodway. Um, so, so basically, yeah, once, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, give them as much, you know, I think it could have been said that we're too flexible with Mr. Tharp. It just took him a while, you know, to uh, essentially get his trucks out of there. And then it took him a while to get the levee reconstructed. 
And None of that was brought up last week at all. Oh, okay. You know, None of it? Was really okay. Just, <laughs> just, it was just to make you aware of it, too, that it was during this no rise certificate and next steps and that type of thing. And as you've said, the Board of Adjustment be the next step, but not without the no rise certificate. Yep. Once, once we receive the no rise certification, then we can proceed to the Board of Adjustment. I mean, my Board of Adjustment folks are probably very conservative. They, they don't approve much for variances. So, um, but definitely this would be needed. So um, it, that's obtained them through them working with the DNR. Is that well? They they, they would have to work with an um, independent engineering firm. Okay. And that would that help them work through the process. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Tom, did you have a question or comment? Yeah, Zep, if it's denied at the uh, oversight board, uh, what's the procedure after that then? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if, if the Board of Adjustment denies it, they're just going to have to remove it. There's, remove there's, it. there's no remediation or anything. Okay. Um, and then they can't even take it to the Board of Adjustment unless they have the no rise certification. So if DNR okay. re rejects it, you mean, as far as they're not getting a certi certification, then it's done it, because yes. it can't go forward. It can't go forward to, the, to our Board of Adjustment. I think Ms. Schulte's question, and correct me if I'm not correct, was that they wondered about going through the process and then being denied. You know, they get the certification. I don't know the cost of it. I think she yeah, said something I, about thousands of dollars. But were she yeah. to spend thousands of dollars, get the certification, and then have your Board of Adjustment, I could still reject it, correct? They, they, they still Even could reject it. Even if it was there. So there was no. Yeah, and then I'm, I know it's unfortunate, uh, but yeah, Iowa DNR, I spoke with them and I said, is there a possibility we could waive it? And they said no, you know, because they had, you know, basically with their software, they had, they had information, not only the size of the new garage, but the old garage as well. So they were able to, you know, I mean, had they just, you know, pulled a permit to rehabilitate it and then, you know, um, as long as they met the, the floodplain requirements, that could have been an option, but no, they, they totally got rid of the old garage and then put up a new garage, which, which basically threw them into existing floodplain regulations. So when you mentioned to the independent engineer, let's just say like it would be rejected ultimately, but anyhow, this would be the next step in the process for them to acquire services of that individual. Yeah, because if, yeah, if they, if they I, know, I know it's a risk. I mean, if, if yeah. they decide to move forward with the engineer and they deny it, then it's, then they got to remove the garage. It's unfortunately done at that point. But if it, if they do approve the no rise certification, then everything hinges on my board of adjustment as to whether or not they'll approve a variance for them to keep a garage in the floodway. So um, I know there was some conversation and comments last week after the meeting and um, talking with Ms. Schulte and I think even others that had had experience with something similar, the no rice situation. And I think it was, and I could be wrong on this, but they had a conversation with DNR. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe just trying to work through that if what would be acceptable and that type of thing. So I wondered if that wouldn't be something, a path maybe that they should try. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When, when, they're, when they're looking for an engineer or whatnot, yeah, they'll, you know, because um, Iowa DNR will have to sign off on it as well, ultimately. Yeah. Probably end up being a joint application. And if there couldn't be at least some proposed solutions of if you do some of these things, this would be different. But you're saying still, even with that certificate, your Board of Adjustment could still yeah. deny it. Unfortunately. So, and rather conservative at this moment. Is, do you have any questions or comments? Or I know it's your situation, and ultimately, yeah, but I... I'm just here to pass it on to her. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll try to work with you guys the, the best that we can. And, you know, we all I make mistakes. <laughs> um, I I understand. And, all right. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I I'm hoping that you can keep the garage, <laughs> but it's not going to keep me there for you. Yeah. Oh, right. Thank you. I thought it was some of that process that I no, I totally didn't know how it was would work. So yeah. it was helpful for you to hear you. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just one of those unfortunate things. And then, you know, I mean, the thing is we got to maintain good standing with the National Flood Insurance Program. If, if we just 
flat out let people do what they want, we could lose that, and then nobody can have flood insurance. If in someone county. were to go forward with that and get that, let's just say worst case scenario, there wasn't something he could work out with DNR and he went through the hiring the engineer and doing the services and getting the certification and it's turned down at Board of Adjustment, they still have that last step that I guess could come to the Board of Supervisors as well and we could overturn it. Just, I'm not trying to put any kind of I'm, I believe out there. I, I, I believe, um, um, Mike, the only way to overturn Board of Adjustment is through District Court. Is that correct? Oh, then you could tell me that. <laughs> yeah, their, deci their decision's final, Linda. The board doesn't have any say so on the oversight. It, it can go to court. But you got, oh, I'm sorry, but go you ahead. Gotta remember, you got to remember, too, Linda, the reason why we're sitting here today is because they didn't get a permit to build it. I know. I'm just so, knowing you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, we have a law and rules that you have to get a permit. The process. Oh, yeah. oh, go ahead, Mike. No, my understanding is consistent with Seth. Is that uh, district court's your next avenue of appeal? And I, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, the same law applies to them as applies to this whole process, too. That's the, the one thing everybody's got to keep in mind here. Yep. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm not saying that they should have got a permit, but there's a lot of other people around here. All the way to Washburn that put buildings up that never got permits or nothing. I, yeah, well, it's to me it ain't fair if you're singling out one person. I mean, we're not trying to single mm -hmm. out anyone. I mean, if you want to bring those to my attention, mm -hmm. I, I can do a code enforcement on those folks. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't go out to the county mm -hmm. and look for mistakes. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, it takes a lot of money. Yeah, I'm. I'm I give everything that I can in this county. But I'm, I'm you know, I'm unfortunately kind of your hands are kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So all right. So uh, yeah, that was gonna say that helps as much as we can, I guess, to the process, but it's like all right. a decision up to you. Thank you. The only thing she did was to get that rice thing, you know, but it cost a couple thousand or something and then have it denied. I know. That's her biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, the only other option would be maybe to avoid that is to, you know, maybe sell the garage and have it like somewhere else. But that's the only avenue. Right. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. And, uh, wish you guys better news. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Seth, and thank you, sir. <laughs> Moving on to item E, resolution that the tax sale certificate assignment 201-200-1050 for vacant lot between 859 and 847 Newton Street in Waterloo, Iowa, pursuant to 446.31 of the Code of Iowa be approved and said certificate of purchase of tax sale be assigned to Salvador Gill Pavia as recommended by Linda Hensman, Blackhawk County Treasurer. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. I was going to say, Linda, did you want to speak to this at all in the next couple items, or is there anybody that has any questions? Um, I see Mr. Pavi is here as well, um, as Linda could speak to it. If there are none, please answer as your name is called. Schwartz? Yes. Joka? Yes. Hall? I believe you made it. Little? Yes. Valen? Yes. Item F, resolution that the compromise offered in the amount of $3,500 by Salvador Gil Pavia on taxes owed for vacant lot, parcel 8913-14-354-002, between 859 and 847 Newton Street in Waterloo be approved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. And moved and seconded. If there are no questions or comments, please answer as your name is called. Drelka? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Yeah. Leyland? Yes. Thank you. Item G, we'll move on. And thank you for being here today, too. I was going to say he was here in the audience. 
Thanks. Moving on to item G, discussion review of the draft RFP for healthcare, medical, and mental health included services for the Blackhawk County Jail. Good morning. Good morning, board. Nate Neff, jail administrator. Um, before we get into this, first I just want to thank um, the subcommittee that kind of for all their input on this with uh, Chris Tavis and especially Michelle. She had a lot of work in this, especially as she was wrapping down her first um, budget year with the county. So appreciate all that and appreciate all you guys. Um, before we get into the RFP itself, just a little bit of the, the background on it, what kind of led us here. Um, obviously, the rising costs played a, a large factor in putting this back out for proposal. Um, did a couple other comps. I know, uh, Dan, you'd mentioned something about Bramer County at one of the previous meetings, just um, about what their costs were. But I called up and I talked to Sheriff Pickett to see exactly um, how they were getting by as, for as much less as than we are. Um, as you know, our average daily population in the jail usually runs in the 250 to 260 range. Um, Bramer County is generally in that 50 to 60 range, most of whom are federal inmates. They generally house about 10 to 15 of their own inmates. Um, the feds pay for their own medical stuff, so Bramer County is really looking at medical care for about 10 people generally. Um, and a lot of theirs are time servers, and if they have issues with anybody, they just kind of boot the time server out. So, so we're really comparing a 250, 260 person jail to a five person thing as far as you're talking medical costs there. So to get more of an apples to apples comparison, I called over to Pottawatomie County. They're one of the only other uh, direct supervision jails in the county. Um, their average daily populations are at around 250 to 260 as well, so a lot more even playing field to look at there. <clears throat> Excuse me. They do have self-employed nursing right now. The jail itself manages that. However, um, they're currently staffed with nursing from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m., whereas we're 24-7, but they're finding that that's not enough, and they, uh, I talked to the jail administrator, assistant jail administrator, and she said they're planning on expanding to full coverage in the near future. Um, they've also got... Um, medical health care on site about or mental health care on site about 10 hours a week whereas we're at 40 and they've also found that that's not nearly enough for them and they're looking to expand on that as well and even with that their medical budget is a uh, 1.15 million dollars and that's for two-thirds of the medical coverage and 25 percent of the mental health care coverage so once they expand to closer to what we're at I think you're going to see that our costs fall pretty much right in line with what they're at I mentioned our, uh, we have a mental health counselor on hand 40 hours a week. Actually, not a counselor, we have a nurse practitioner, a psychiatric nurse practitioner on hand. Um, talking to her, she sees 100 to 120 patients per week in the jail. Some of those are just for a few minutes. Some of those are for a lot longer time with an evaluation. Obviously, if we have somebody in crisis, she's right there to deal with them during the day. Um, right now, as of in May, we had 130 different inmates on psychiatric meds, and they were on 200, 299 different meds. Um, which in talking to those other two jails, they actually were pretty impressed by that. Um, they generally have more meds per inmate when they have that. I think some of that can be attributed to the continuity of care that we have. The psych psychiatric NP is seeing the same people over and over. She kind of knows their story. She kind of knows how to work with them. Whereas when you're using telepsych for those services, you're going to see someone different pretty regularly. They're not going to have the full picture on that person. So I think it's a little better care with the continuity that's going on there. Um, here. We had talked about, um, instead of going out for RFP, if there was somebody locally that would be available to help us out with it, we had reached out to some of our partners in the community, um, and no one's really able to take on the jail. Um, the correctional health care versus clinical health care is just too great of a difference. Um, they've been more than happy to help us throughout the RFP process to go through when we get proposals back in, grading them, um, evaluating who, who we should go with, and obviously they're great partners with us, and they're always here to help whenever we can, they can with our inmates as our inmates get out any of that kind of stuff but unfortunately as far as them taking on the load for us it's just not a real feasible option for any of them but I do appreciate the support for everyone being here um, I think moving on from there like I said we've talked a little bit about why we have the 24 7 nursing coverage we've also I've sent you guys each the uh, consent decree that we got back in 99 um, one of the big things that called out was lack of medical care on site and a lack of mental health care on site that we had then. So a lot of where we are now came based off that Justice Department ruling that we got almost 25 years ago. And I dare say that the need for both medical and certainly mental health care now is uh, far greater than it was in 1999. Especially we all know Iowa ranks either last in the country or close to it every year when it comes to uh, mental health beds per capita and just our mental health care in general. So unfortunately, 
over in the jail, we become kind of the, the default mental health facility. Um, mm -hmm. It's not necessarily fair. It's not right to our citizens. It's not necessarily fair that we have to foot the bill as Blackout County, but unfortunately, without much help from the state, that's kind of where we're at. So. Was that something, Nate, that had to be addressed, like corrective action for that? Was well, the consent decree? Yeah, I was going to say, yes. you provided that, that had a lot of information. I assume there was some response or something that was Yeah, needed. that's where, again, when a lot of the changes we made came strictly based off that. Um, I think we were even uninsurable through ICAP there for a while once we had that. Um, just our, our liabilities and our costs went through the roof on it. So I know we pay more up front for things now, but it's certainly cheaper on the back end. Um, and not even, you take the finances out, it's just the, the right thing to do, way to take care of people. But again, you can roll out the, the liabilities as well. Well, that kind of brings us up to the RFP itself. I know I sent this to you almost two weeks ago now, so hopefully everyone's had a chance to look through it. It's what, 32 pages of it. Um, as, you, as you've gone through it, is there, are there any questions, anything I can ask, answer for you on that? Well, that's really what my questions were last week, and I know I apologize that it was like say a time you were taking vacation, but it was really to have a summarized kind of ver you know, what you looked at, what you took time at, what you changed, what you want to see differently, or how this differs and that type of thing before we actually dug into it and had to make a decision. So that was where I was trying to push it a little bit and it didn't, doesn't work with you not here, obviously. So. Right, yeah, everything in here holds us to basically essentially right where we're at. Um, the one thing I did drop a little bit just in the hopes of um, taking it down a little bit was um, we currently have either a doctor or a nurse practitioner come on site, medically speaking, um, for about nine hours a week and I put in here for a minimum of six hours a week. I forget what page that's on, um, so pretty, minimal change but it can help us out a little bit while still providing the, the care that we need to over there and so that was this the document taken from like our previous RFP this, that was this done? I used um, Polk County just did their uh, request, for, uh, request for proposal last year um, and they had a team of attorney they actually have their jail has their own attorney and I think their sheriff's office has their own attorney so their team of attorneys drew this up um, I went through um, our current RFP and I went through what they had and paired a lot of it out because a lot of it didn't apply to us. So they have different buildings, different facilities, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So I did pare it down, but um, a lot of this is based off what their uh, legal team came up with. So, and the sheriff had provided Scott County information too. Was that any did that play into this at all? Uh, I didn't or have Scott County on with me when okay. I was going through this. No. Okay. Does anything that you say other than that little bit that you mentioned is pared down, and it, this is exactly the same types of services we have now? Nothing changing in it really. No, this is it. essentially carrying on exactly what we have now. Not asking for any more by any means, but um, other than dropping a couple of clinical hours from the medical doctor per week, I'm not asking for any less either. Um, for tax saving measures, I would love to tell you we could cut down on the plan, but I think just realistically, we can't. Um, we provide a lot of care for a, a very vulnerable population. Um, we're the only care they get. and. Once they get out, if they're regulated, there's a lot better chance that they don't come back in. Not to mention it's just safer for them while they're in there. Um, if we can keep people regulated with their mental health care, um, obviously the likelihood for suicide goes down. One suicide is gonna cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not into the millions, um, plus just the loss of life itself. Um, if we keep people regulated, they're not only are they less of a harm to themselves, but it keeps the other inmates safe, it keeps our staff safe as well. So it's just, I mean, it's safer for everyone obviously to be regulated. And again, when they get out, they've got a better chance for success too. Um, I think the, the attorneys would tell you that it's much easier to work with a regulated client and get them out. If someone's not able to think correctly, they're not able to work with their attorney, they're not able to, to take, whether it's work on a plea, whether it's to build their defense, whatever it takes. So those people, are gonna sit there longer and longer and longer. And we have a couple now that are denying some care and stuff, and we do, we see that. They just keep causing problems, causing problems for us, for our staff, for other inmates. Um, the ability to keep them regulated is huge. Keeps the system moving much better for everyone. Nate, when you, have, did you check with any other uh, places throughout the country that had NAF care? I did not because I, you know, I tried to do this not looking at it as a lens through just keeping an AFCAR. I wanted to keep this as an open and an impartial thing. It's an RFP that's going out. Um, and obviously we'll take what responses we get. More than likely they'll uh, be one of a couple. Okay. When you checked with the various counties, and I think one of them was 
the county was equal size to us in population in the jail. Uh, did you talk at all with them about what kind of services they were receiving? Uh, did any of them have a 35% increase in the middle of their contract? Um, like we received with NAF care. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we're here today is because of the cost has gone up when we actually had an agreement. So I was just curious, has anybody else suffered the same thing that Black Oak County did? No, like I said, when I talked to Pottawatomie County, they actually uh, run their own medical department. So they didn't have that contract to work with. But when you do the dollars and cents on it, the uh, $1.15 million for, like I said, they've got about two thirds of the medical coverage and a quarter of the mental health care coverage we do. If you extrapolate that out, you're gonna be right up into that same range where we are. What is our cost right now? And Sheriff, just what is our to... what is our total cost, Nate? Right now, what are we up to? I believe that contract. I was gone when you guys signed that contract, but I think it's about what is it, one point eight million right now right in that range. And um, uh, you did ask about did anybody else come back for uh, for more money mid contract? Polk County did face that um, with with NAFCAR as well. They came back to them last year, and that was just a few months after they'd signed their contract. You don't know what kind of an increase they uh, went through, or if they accepted it, or anything. I know they accepted it. I think it was in that 25, 30% range as well. So they renewed with NAFCARE and then new contract with them. Yeah, as they, well. they actually switched over to NAFCARE from a different company and then I think less than a year later had to, had to re-up okay. anymore as well. Okay. Now, is there anything, I didn't look at this specifically from a staffing need. We don't identify the staff that these people are to provide. They're, we're expecting them to make proposals, I guess, because the staffing was kind of an issue we worked through or tried to work through, I guess, with NAFCARE and weren't, that kind of seemed to be a moving target for us for a little while, so. Yeah, what I did, I, as a proposal, I've asked for coverage for 24 seven. Um, it's up to them to tell me how they're going to do that. Um, whatever they feel it takes to maintain the care for that time, I'm open to that. And were they just for my clarity, I was going to say, were they contracting with some of our organizations here locally for some of the services that they were just going through NAFCARE, or do we contract with our various agencies here? No, we contract just with NAFCARE for our care. Um, okay. Where a lot of our other agencies come in is more with the continuity of care, and obviously we're used to working with them, or they, they see a lot of the same people, a lot of the same clients. Mm -hmm. So there's a good network going on talking about things, both when someone first comes into jail, when they get out of jail, some of the follow-ups with that. There think, is some monthly reimbursements for county social services. Yeah, county social services does pay for our psychiatric meds right now, which I've got built into the, the meds. contract. That'll stay in there so long as county social services agrees to do so. I noticed you had a pre-bid meeting and that type of thing too, so hopefully we get more than one or two. I would certainly hope so. <laughs> but, so there's, there's two companies I can think of that I'd reasonably expect, and hopefully somebody else comes comes out of the woodwork. It's always nice to have at least three. I know when we looked back and saw it that 2009, when this was done maybe in 2009, it looked like, too, there were about 11 companies that came to mind. I know Sheriff Thompson's mentioned before some have gone out of business and probably some maybe wouldn't be able to handle, I guess, our needs. I don't know, so that might not be quite that exuberant a list I would assume but yeah I don't I'm, I'm gonna guess some of those bought each other out and are bigger companies and we're in a very strange size frame I know we feel like we're big for Iowa purposes but we're there's some that focus on just the small ones and do these 20 30 beds and then there's other ones that do the Cook County Illinois the Clark County you know, Nevada's that kind of stuff and where they're multi-million dollar deals um, so we're actually in a kind of a weird range where we're too small for some of them and we're too big for others so how do we get it out there Nate I mean how, I mean how do we let other companies know that we're putting this out for bid well there's actually a lot of people spend a lot of time the vendors kind of comb in the internet for it obviously we'll put it out I'll contact the two that I know of um, generally there's only three at any of the schools I go to but one of those went out of business here just in the last fall um, so we get it out um, I can do some research too, and I'll see what other companies I can come up with to contact on it. But uh, okay. So you're thinking right now we're probably looking just at two companies, or that all, all the different uh, schools and essentially trade shows things I go to throughout the year. There are 
two companies that are at that now, and actually NAFCAR is not even at a lot of them because, again, most of the jails in Iowa are smaller than what they deal with. So there's been ACH, and there's another company, I can't even think of their name now, MEND was their name, but uh, MEND went out of business, so ACH, which is Advanced Correctional Healthcare, they're the ones that we I see at all these shows, so I'm, and they're always handing me cards and trying to get in the door anyway, so I feel comfortable that uh, at least ACH and NAFCAR will, will bid on us. And I'll definitely do some research, scour the internet, and uh, if I find any other companies out there, I'll send them a, a link. I know Polk County just had theirs out for bid last year. I can contact the jail administrator down there <coughs> and uh, see who else bid on theirs, and we'll reach out to them and hopefully get some responses. Who bid on it the last time you recall, Nate? I, in 09, I didn't have anything to do with it. I was. I was a happy patrol guy at the time, so. Uh, I'm just, yeah, I just wondered if you did any research to see what company's been on the last I time. Know. Tony, do you remember who would have been on back then? Most of those companies in the laundering business. Oh. ACH did. Yeah, and did you hear that, Tom? Yeah, okay. thank you. So this is what you'd feel ready to go, except for you made some comments about there was some language that you weren't sure that you wanted Mike Trinan to review. Yeah, that was on an appendix that Tom actually emailed me here a few weeks ago. Um, there's some things as Michelle and I went through it, I don't know, I think they apply more to things for actual purchases or that as opposed to services. Um, but before we just started striking things, and I did just last night, even though I've read this 100 times, I found a couple more typos I had in there, so. But other than a couple little typos and couple things for Mike to review. Yep, I've got about three little issues I've identified, but nothing. No, but otherwise that, and then obviously mm -hmm. changing the timeline, pushing it back by a week or so. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> same timeline, you don't see any changes in that other than us delaying, I mean, changing that week. Correct, no, by barring anything else from anyone else, I think, you know, if you want to put it on as an action item next week, I think we'd be ready to go with it. Does that sound good for board members yep. next week to put it on for the yes. agenda? Yes, that's good for me. You too, Tom, or would you like more? Yeah, time? I think it's, yeah, that's fine. Might as well get it going. Okay. And you assume like that opening could be September 5th. This seems like a realistic time time to you with everything yep, that's I been delayed and. I think so. I mean, we just push everything back by a week. I think it gives us enough time to to go through it and then for the for the final we just put a tentative on it so we're not going to lock ourselves sure. in anything and you'll notice too on the uh the committee i didn't lock us in anybody because it'll obviously depend on when some of our partners are available to uh to go through and do that but we definitely want some input from, from our partners as well on that so. and you had several in there to choose from from the evaluation process is that on their availability or their willingness yeah, that to do it? i mean they've all indicated a willingness to help out so it's more just on availability and I mean, Michelle and I had trouble finding the time to get the two of us together sometimes mm -hmm. over the last few weeks, so we start throwing in uh, other agencies, and, and obviously schedules get tricky this time of year. So, sure. did I was going to say, did any of them happen to look at or review the RFP? I didn't send the RFP out with them. We've kind of discussed that uh, we want to keep things the same. I know there had been some talk about possibly uh, lowering some of the standards in there, and um, as your jail administrator, I just can't can't encourage that. I can't promote that or support that so hopefully uh, everyone's looking at keeping that the same and uh, if there was going to be talk about trying to lower the standards I think some of them were going to discuss necessarily why they feel that would be a bad idea as well and uh, if there were any questions about why they couldn't just run the jail itself they were here to help out with that too but uh, I think just always being aware of cost savings or what we could do differently or those oh it's absolutely it was worth looking into but unfortunately it just wasn't too feasible for us yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions for Nate or comments? I appreciate you like just kind of dissecting it a little bit for us today and like I said I thought it was a lot to try to review and understand and come prepared with questions when you could probably address them so thank you. Yes, my pleasure. Super. All right, we'll move on to the hearings. <clears throat> And the time is 1010 and it's a hearing on proposed ordinance number 77-280 Ryan Weber rezone. Is there a motion to receive and place on file proof of publication? Oh. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 
proposed same sign. Item two, motion to waive the first reading as noticed by published on July 11th, 2023 in the Waterloo Courier. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item three, motion to close the hearing as oral and written comments were received and placed on file. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Beter, are there any written comments? No, ma'am. Thank you. Seth? Okay, all right. The, the Planning and Zoning Commission at the regular meeting on June 21st, 2023, reviewed the request by Ryan M. Weber to rezone 3.56 acres for May Agricultural District to AL Agricultural Lemon District in order to construct a 120 by 60 uh, pole building addition or a seed company, uh, which is approximately 1,600 feet east of the South uh, Canfield Road and Osage Road intersection. Uh, the request to rezone 3.65 acres from A to AL. Um, it was moved by Brunette and seconded by Nagel to approve the request. Uh, Ryan and Weber uh, to rezone 3.65 acres from Agricultural District to AL Agricultural Limited District or to construct a 120 by 60 pole building addition for a seed company. The request was unanimously approved. Um, the uh, Surrounding area uh, consists of agricultural lands with some rural homes and the zoned agricultural district to the north, south, east, and west. Uh, the rezone area is designated as agricultural in the future land use map, a component of the Black Hawk County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. I know the north, south, east, and west is designated as agricultural as well. Uh, none of the rezone area is located in a special flood hazard area is designated by FEMA. Uh, site has a land evaluation score of 93 and leases score of 234, indicating moderate agricultural value. Uh, the applicant wishes to rezone 3.56 acres from A to AL in order to construct a 120 by 60 pole building addition for a seed company. Uh, seeds are considered a value-added agricultural product. Uh, the parcel is large enough to accommodate one developed lot that will meet the lot size requirements for the AL. Agricultural limited district by being greater than 1.5 acres in size and wider than 150 feet. A rezone area is mostly developed with agricultural buildings. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously approved the rezone request at the regular meeting on June 21st, 2023. Uh, the proposed rezone area is not located within the airport land use height overlay review area. And uh, no concerns by the Technical Review Committee. Um, basically, this type of business uh, does qualify as a home industry business, but one of the caveats within the zoning ordinance is that you max out at 9,000 square feet. So, so the rezone is basically necessary so that they can construct a structure that's large enough for uh, the business. So, um, and then the AL uh, type zoning is perfect match for, for this so that he can do his building expansion for his seed company and I don't think you get more agricultural than a seed company. <laughs> for sure. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this? Okay. All right. It's been a motion to close the hearing. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Item is a resolution to suspend the rules requiring the Board of Supervisors to consider and vote on the proposed ordinance of two prior meetings. So moved. Moved, moved and seconded. Please answer as your name is called. Trelka? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Valen? Yes. Item five, ordinance adoption. That ordinance amending ordinance number 36 as amended Blackhawk County, Iowa Agricultural Preservation Zoning Ordinance adopted February 2nd, 1999 by adding subsection number 280 to section 6B, rezoning certain property as described on the above request submitted by Ryan Weber and to consider the same for adoption and if adopted would be known as ordinance number 77-280. So moved. And moved and seconded. <clears throat> Please answer as your name is called. Little. Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Jelka? Yes. Valen? Yes. I was going to say now that with a uh, new fiscal year, we can maybe get our new printer. <laughs> it's a little difficult to read these maps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the board wishes they should.
shall receive. Thank you. Uh, that's, uh, next hearing, and the time is 10.15, for the hearing bid opening for proposed facility security services. Motion to receive and place on file proof of publication. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same aye. sign. Motion carries. Motion to close the hearing after oral and written comments are received. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Mr. Beter, are there any written comments? No, ma'am. Mr. Gemming. Good morning again, board. Uh, we did receive uh, six bids. You should have a uh, uh, bid tabulation form on your desk. Uh, the one thing I might point out as I open these, uh, we did ask for them to separate out uh, uh, the uh, courthouse services uh, with the uh, Pinecrest services. So if you wouldn't mind just maybe drawing a line down the center of that uh, total bid column. Uh, one half would be for Pinecrest and the other obviously for the courthouse. I think that would help uh, make more sense since they both, they're, they're coming from different funding streams, so. Roy, what's the current cost? Uh, right now, I believe we are at roughly $18 per hour for guard. Uh, give or take uh, a little bit on that. I didn't bring that actual dollar amount, but I believe it's in the $18 an hour range. So are we bidding it out an hour per employee or are we bidding out as a contract for the full year? We're gonna actually, um, when, uh, when we take this back, we're going to put it uh, several different ways. But what we asked for the, uh, uh, the vendors to uh, state their hourly cost, um, for uh, two guards and then an optional third guard at the courthouse, and then there are hourly costs for a guard over at the uh, Pinecrest facility. Um, and then when we take these back, uh, just like we did back in 2016, we've got a, a spreadsheet that uh, will break that out as far as what that yearly cost would be. Um, we did ask them to go for three years on this too, by the way. So. so does that so answer? the numbers we'll be looking at today will be per hour. Correct. Thank you. Sorry. All right. So the first one is uh, Citadel Security Group out of uh, Ames, Iowa. Sure. Okay, Cynadel. We are at uh, sorry to read twenty six dollars and twenty six cents per hour for for year one. Year two, we're at is this Pinecrest or courthouse. This is for the courthouse. Okay. Uh, year two, we are at uh, twenty seven dollars and four cents. Per hour and year three, we are at twenty-seven dollars and eighty-five cents per hour. For Pinecrest, we are at twenty-six dollars and twenty or twenty-six uh, twenty-six per hour. Year one, year two, we are at twenty-seven point oh four. Year three, twenty-seven point eight five. <clears throat> Second one is Garter World out of uh, Cedar Rapids. This one I will have to break out, but uh, for for the courthouse, uh, they did state uh, total yearly amount. Uh, so this could get a little confusing on your bid form. So we'll have to take this back and uh, and uh, kind of clear it up for everybody. 
uh, but the year one is $142,961.37. Year two, $147,250.21. Year three, $154,615.72. And then uh, uh, for, uh, for our, our cost on that uh, is $27.42 per year. Year two, twenty-eight thirty-one. Year three, twenty-nine seventy-three. And again, we will uh, put this all together for everybody. Third one is Global Security out of Davenport, Iowa. Is that for both Pinecrest and Courthouse on Garter Worlds? Did I list out Pinecrest? That was just Pinecrest. Uh, no, did I? I, I, I think you just gave the you gave oh, the three I'm annual sorry. totals and then the three hourly. You didn't give. Yeah, any and then uh, okay. So the hourly for Pinecrest was twenty seven forty two, year one, year two, twenty eight thirty one, year three, twenty nine seventy three. So both okay. of those they're so just those, using the same. It's the same. The uh, the first figure you gave the hundred forty two thousand was that for one facility or both. That was just for the courthouse for two guards. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, this one is Global uh, Security Services out of uh, Davenport, Iowa. So the first section uh, is for two guards, um, and they also put a yearly amount for year one is one sixty three two eighty, and this is courthouse. Year two one sixty three two eighty, year three one sixty eight one seventy eight point four zero. For an additional guard at the courthouse per hour, we're at 3140. Year two, 3140. Year three, 3234. For Pinecrest, year one per hour, 2507. Year two, 2507. Year three, 2582. Next one is Permar Security Services out of Cedar Rapids. For the courthouse, per hour, 2206. Year two, 2279. Year three, 2368. For an additional Third staff per hour, 2206 at the courthouse. 2206, year one, year two, 2279, year three, 2368. Pinecrest, year one per hour, 2206, year two, 2279, year three, 2368. Thank you. Security, uh, Securitas Security Services out of Cedar Rapids. For the courthouse, per hour, year one, 2845. Year two, 2959. Year three, 3077. For a third additional per hour, 2845, year one. Year two, 2959. Year three, 3077. For Pinecrest per hour, first year, 2845. Year two, 2959. Year three, 3077. Thank you. Last one, Signal 88 Services out of Dubuque.
courthouse for our 2850 year one year two 2990 year three 3140 Pinecrest per hour year one 2850 year two 2990 year three 3140 and that concludes our bids Rory when you bring those back could you just bring them back then what it cost us a year the first year the second year and the third year at the courthouse same thing at Pinecrest Yep, as I had mentioned uh, at the beginning, um, what we did back in 2000, 2016, we actually identified the per hour cost, the annual cost, and the overtime potential cost. So we, uh, we've got a template that we've used, which worked really nicely back in 2016. So we'll take all of this information, uh, incorporate that into this uh, template, and uh, provide it to the board with our uh, recommendation. And then also bring the numbers of what we're currently paying in for everything you just mentioned. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to place on file review. Okay, I, I need to probably go back in that motion to close the hearing. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. And thank you for the motion to place on file. And second. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Okay, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Thank you. Item 10 is a work session. Is there anyone that has anything to discuss or question on the county projects, ARPA projects? Not today. I mentioned Mike maybe in a week or two, maybe just an update would be good for all of us, kind of seeing where some of the status and some of those projects are and the mobile clinic is one that came to mind just to see where we're at with some of those so if there's anything else somebody wants thank you Good. any reports or information from the board <clears throat> no nothing anybody on zoom neither okay we'll move on item 12 closed session this is a resolution that pursuant to the provisions of the Iowa open meetings law <clears throat> Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors shall proceed into closed session with attorney to discuss the purchase or sale of particular real estate only where premature disclosure could be reasonably expected to increase the price and the government body would receive for the property or reduce the price the government would receive for that property minutes and the audio recording of session closed under this paragraph shall be available for the public examination once the transaction is discussed is completed pursuant to Iowa code 21.5 J so we'll move. Then moved and seconded. <clears throat> Please answer as your name is called. And we'll Schwartz. Please. Yes. Jelka. Yes. Little. Yes. Leyland. Yes. Thanks very much. Okay. Open. Yeah. I will. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'd like a motion to adjourn the board of supervisors meeting in closed session. So moved. Second. All in Second. favor. All in favor. Say aye. 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 Opposed. Same aye. sign. Now for an adjournment for the whole session. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.